Hi everybody. This is part two of my Judy Woods, I guess it's a mini series. I took a took part in a Judy Woods free training course this past summer. Loved it. Um, Judy Woods is an amazing artist in her own right. Um, I will put links to her social media information down below in the course in the description. This is part two of my, I guess my tiny mini series on this, on this project. The first part I will link um, in this description and hopefully I'll put a card above if I remember, was all about making the background. So these black and white backgrounds, I have four 24 by 24 canvases that I used for this. And there was, you know, painting the whole thing black, then adding white on top adding collage to really build up the texture and create interest in these, even though they're fairly simple backgrounds. There's some depth there that you won't see unless you're, you know, closer up to the painting itself. This time I'm going through and adding a few components, I'm adding basically some focal points. The first step is taping off these rectangular sections and adding some acrylic inks to create a color block. You'll notice that I'm also painting over the tape with some gloss medium. That essentially seals the tape edges so that the paint hopefully doesn't bleed under. So it keeps a nice crisp edge where the tape is. It didn't work. It wasn't a foolproof um, execution in this project which you'll see later when I take the tape off, but it worked well enough. There's that gloss medium. Drying it with the hair dryer because I want to make sure it's dry before I add the paint, otherwise it doesn't work. And again, this is acrylic ink. Um, it's, I would, I think it's very comparable to the golden high flow acrylics, but it's just a little bit different. It's a little bit it just feels a little bit different. This background I was especially happy with. I think there's enough difference in it. There's some quieter spaces. There's some great detail. Hopefully you can't hear my kids crying below me. <laughs> They're in the basement. I've shoved them away so I could do this and naturally they're playing right underneath my studio. So that's always good. <laughs> definitely you're crying don't worry my husband's down there with them they're fine all right so I'm adding some water and again because I did each of the four backgrounds I did a bit differently because I wanted to experiment a bit within the the framework that Judy Woods provided in her training course um, I did do four different methods slightly different I'm doing the same thing with these with these color blocked areas as well and some of them are using more of an ombre effect, adding some water, having some very light areas, some more concentrated, more pigmented areas. Um, this tape did not come off very easily and some of the tape ripped up the paint underneath, which should not have happened. So that I'm sure was a user error on my part, either in the type of collage I used underneath the paint or the paint itself that I used. I'm not entirely sure what happened there and some of the paint blood under, as you can see there as well. So now I'm adding um, some very representational silhouettes on top of these backgrounds and overlapping some part with the color blocked area. What this does is it really pulls focus because the color is so different from the black and white, your eye instantly goes to the color. On top of that, I'm using this white opaque paint to create this plant silhouette. So now we're adding something that's very crisp and representational on top of kind of these loose, this loose color blocked square, this, um, you know, somewhat haphazard background of, of lines scratched in and different textures. So between the color block itself and now this crisp, you know, clean edged shape of the hydrangea branch I'm using, 
it's really becoming a big focal point. I haven't done anything representational for such a long time that this felt, um, well, first of all, I was surprised at how long it took me to do it. I actually sped this up to time lapse and then I sped it up even more because I figured you got the gist after the first couple leaves I painted. Um, and it was, it was, it just felt tremendously long <laughs> without, without speeding it up. So, um, I enjoy, I love hydrangeas, first of all. So these are from my garden this summer. And I went right along with the recommendation from Judy Woods that she started in the course because she took some, she took a branch, I think, and she just drew the branch on there and used that as a silhouette. I liked the idea of using plants. I love the idea of using plants from my, gar my own garden. And I wanted to try it because I haven't done anything representational for such a long time. I do think this hydrangea branch was one of the most successful that I that I did. There are a couple others that I didn't like as much, but I was able to experiment and try some different things. And that's always a good thing in my book. These seem so different than what I normally do that it was, that's what made it fun partially. And I honestly can't tell if they still feel like me. So I would love to hear what you guys think. Does this still feel like if you saw this, would you think, yeah, that's, that's like Jackie? Um, or would you think like, what is she doing? She's just taking on someone else's style. Um, I, don't, I still feel like it's my style, but it's just such it's such a different look than I'm used to because usually I have nothing representational. So I'd be interested in hearing your opinions on, on whether it works and still feels like me. The paint I used was not super opaque. So I'm doing another coat here just to make sure it's really, really white. So it pops. Part of the fun of this project was actually looking in my garden to see what kind of leaves and branches I wanted to use. So I definitely love hydrangeas, so that was an easy choice. And then I looked through some of my favorite plants, but tried to pick leaves that were interesting. And some of my favorite plants, the leaves weren't actually interesting, so. Were I to do it over again, I may have just picked hydrangeas, just different hydrangea branches for each one. However, <laughs> that's not what I did. In the interest of experimenting with each of the four as slightly different pieces of this four-piece puzzle, I picked different plants every time. All right, so this is number two. So this one I rushed through and in my opinion, it shows. I'm not as happy with this from a, a leaf perspective. So I can go and change that later, should I choose to. But this canvas in general felt more problematic even before I drew the leaves because it feels like there's so much going on. The white wasn't as opaque as it could have been in the background, leaving it to look messy to me and like sensory overload. There's just a lot going on. So that could add to why I don't like these leaves as well or why I didn't think they were as successful. But there is stuff, there are things I still do like about that canvas. Now this background I really was happy with. I love how those dots look on the left, the large dots. I love how the spray dots look on the right and you can see the paint kind of forming around the edge of those collaged pieces. 
that are unique shapes. There's more rest for your eye in this one as well. And the differences where I've etched into the white paint to show the black and etched into the black paint to show the white, those differences are highlighted better because there's less going on. So this one feels much more pleasing to look at than the previous one. I don't remember what plant I got these leaves from, but I do like how they're arranged. Now this one I did do something different with the outlining as well. This I outlined in my Neocolor 2 crayons, which are the water soluble ones. So my thought was, hey, I wonder what this will look like. Maybe the this light pink I chose will blend in to the cream that I'm using to, to fill it in with and I'll get some nice, you know, creamy pink paint in my leaves. But because of how I painted them, I painted them largely inside the lines. It just, there's just still lined with pink. <laughs> so totally in my control and that's what I chose to do. Um, I can certainly change that decision by painting them a little bit larger outside those lines should I choose to do so. And for the last one, I spent a little bit of time figuring out which leaves to use and ended up, I think, going back outside to pick more. And it ended up with these. I can't remember if these are hosta leaves or lily of the valley. I believe it's lily of the valley leaves. And I chose to do two leaves overlapping a bit in the painting. And it reminds me of one of those very exotic, you know, kind of swallowtail butterflies. But subtly. This I feel like is the, the second most successful or one of the two most successful, you know, drawings on top of the, the background. I like that it's off to the side. So this is where everything is now. Here's my hydrangea. This is this last one. The black obviously is, has some glare in these photos. That's where things stood until about a week ago. So now I'm coming back in and I'm looking to just add a little bit more something. They felt too plain to me. Um, looking to, in the words of the great Jonathan Van Ass, I'm looking to zhuzh them up a little bit. So definitely picking some non-subtle choices. All right, here's another. And really, I'm trying to find some some in between. I don't want it to be too crazy, but I'd like it to have some more interest in it. And I want them to be somewhat cohesive. So I'm trying to pick some collage to add that would tie the three of them or to the four canvases together still, but also in some way set them apart. So I like how the tissue paper of those creamy circles went on top of the butterflies to calm them down a bit. Really like that choice. Now here, there's so much busyness going on already because of the paint that adding more felt like too much, but I still tried. You can see how hard I'm trying to get these butterflies in. Now this one I did get into a bit of the thought pattern of, ooh, but I like it, but I don't want to wreck it. So I put that one aside a bit more.
using a china marker to mimic that shape. Because those leaves I wasn't a huge fan of, I thought maybe I would use something to add some texture to that and have an approximation of the same shape, but not an exact representation. So here I decided I would just try this striped tissue paper. and see what that looked like. It feels a little bit like I'm playing with a paper doll. <laughs> Just drawing some clothes for my plant. Neatening up some of the edges. And I did like how this looked. It You know, I, I kind of intentionally offset the leaves so that they wouldn't appear to be trying to exactly line up. But adding a little bit of clothes to my to my leaf. You know, in the others, having the stark white versus black brought the plant forward. And in this one, it the, the, the creamy stripes that I added almost helped set it back more, which I didn't fully realize until right now. And here we go, this one, back over here. Wanted to do something, something subtle that wouldn't totally take away from everything that I liked. So I landed here. Still not sure how I feel about it. I think I may go over that with black to cover up the parts that aren't white so that the creamy circles would stay on the white leaves, but that I would cover up the other parts with black. So we'll see. TBD on that. And it was really nice to go back and look at these again, because I did do these in the summer, and it's been a few months. So adding on to these this week was a nice exercise for me. I had enough distance. I realized that I didn't feel like they were done yet. So I was able to push past any, you know, done feelings that I had about them and keep working. So here I'm trying to make the, the non plant shaped parts get pushed back to the background a bit more by filling in some of the white. And I do have, you know, I'm definitely making some, making it lighter in some areas by pulling the paint back with the paper and the paper towel. And this just a few minor changes just to get that to be more leaf shaped again. But I really ended up happy with a couple of these and there will likely be more, <laughs> more edits here, but do let me know. I would, I would love to hear because I'm still undecided myself. I think this one feels more like me maybe than all the others because maybe because just the leaves don't look, 
exactly like leaves. So it's a little less representational, but I would love to know your feelings. Does it, do these still feel like me or does it feel like I've taken over someone else's style? But thank you, Judy Woods, for the framework to experiment with these. And uh, if I continue working on these, I will certainly add another update. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day.